The thing that I'm, I saw a few times in this is, you know, a kind of really deep stab. That is not easy to, to pull out. Obligatory double sword. If there were such a thing, it would be like basically impossible to use. Oh my goodness. Wealthy hand spiders. It's like hand spiders. This game is scary. What we're seeing is it appears to be a snowy environment. You want to get a good cloak cape situation so you don't freeze to death while you're, you know, on your way to get to get smushed and slashed to death by this zombie looking thing. Look at this sword the main character has. And when I first saw it, I thought it looked kind of like a, a saber or a scimitar, but really it, it looks like a katana that has like a swept tilt rapier furniture on it. Again, it looks cool, but I'm not a fan because the swept tilt like thing makes it really tricky to cut, which is fine because rapiers aren't for cutting. This thing is for cutting. So kind of a aesthetic mutant fail. And from my perspective on the sword. I think historically it's called a katamatar. I'm liking this uh, eagle mutant with the blades tied to its feet. This is next level. <laughs> Kids, anyone can be a sword fighter. You just have to believe. Or you have to have like swords tied to your limbs against your will. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scary aesthetic, I will say. I do love a good draw cut. Always looks super cool. But are you pro like whatever this fluffy boa looking thing is? Is that- I don't that really a, love <laughs> this cape. It seems like he accidentally killed chickens and they stuck to him. Yeah, he looks like looks like Foghorn and Leghorn with a sword. <laughs> so calm down, boy. Slash. Yeah, that's a great, I love that animation. I like the magic stuff, that's cool. Jeez. Oh, it's interesting also how they, the, those bug things sort of wind up before they do a really powerful cut. It kind of gives you, you know, a second to, uh oh, you know, get out of the way. Not super realistic, but very cool gameplay wise. Ooh, surprise! <laughs> I like the cuts of this sword. It's it's cool animations with the red, you know, coming off of it, but it's also the direct lines that you'd be using with the katana, or most swords, honestly. Can you do them that fast? I guess if you're doing surface cuts, so you can come through every time. I mean, just a matter of practicing the combinations. I, I think it'd be tricky one-handed to like really get some combine it. Particularly from below, it's very tricky to make sword cuts powerful from below, just because of body mechanics. Again, from, from, from above, you can get a lot more of your body behind it. With the magic element in this, I'm a, I'm a lot more forgiving of stuff that's less realistic or kind of seems to serve specifically an aesthetic purpose. And again, the sort of like big red sort of lines following or coming out of the sword. Again, that serves a purpose of you really seeing what you're doing, but also, you know, it's it makes sense with the magic. Again, like just throw magic at me and I'm a lot more forgiving of unrealistic, whatever it is. It's like, oh, that, that was a silly sword stroke. Yeah, against a giant bug. Like what else do you believe or not believe? <laughs> like, come on, you know? <laughs> Ooh, here we go. go. That's a that's a cloak. Yeah, no, the cloak the cloak is great, but I was reacting to the big stupid looking Conan looking sword. That is a boat anchor, is what that is. Look how small his hand looks. It it looks like he needs to be like five times his own size to hold this thing properly. Maybe it's made with carbon fiber, so it's super light. I like this enemy thing, this sort of like Corinthian looking shield thing. That's cool. Although the slashing with the spear, not so much. There you go. dangling his other arm down. Like that's the actor new to a weapon mistake. Also, I think the major technique of this guy to be stabbed in the chest. That's the kind of strategy he uses yes. to win battles. Got stabbed in the chest multiple times, victory. Oh my. Jeez, what Don't kind get of close to that thing. devilry is this? Another uh, interesting looking sword there. A lot of spin moves. This is your favorite. Here we are, Paul. You need the spin moves to get the weight of this blade, which is not made of carbon fiber. I forgot what it's called. There's like this East Asian weapon that has a big, big handle and also a really big kind of curved blade. It also reminds me of the ones that the elves use in the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring film, where they get charged at by the orcs and they all spin them at the same time. This game has like got a lot of really interesting, grotesque kind of, and also like kind of mutant imagery, like different aesthetics from different areas and different mythologies kind of smushed together. And also like there's a sort of steampunky element to it. Very goth mm -hmm. gothic. I think gothic might be the best way to describe it. Minotaur, here we go. Several Minotaurs. Okay, Oof. this sword's cool. It's like a, you're channeling the sun into a long sword. It's cool. I like the aesthetic of it. Well, there's some weird, like, either light thing or a weird spike thing coming up. I don't like that. Maybe I mean, that might just be the, the spell, but whatever it is, it's distracting me. What's not distracting you, Paul, is the giant feather cap. Oh, yeah. I didn't have time to, like, get weirded out by that. There's, like, a lot of very odd sort of, like, 
hair underwater looking headwear going on in this game. Oh my goodness. Wealthy hand spiders. It's like hand spiders. And the hands have like way too many fingers. This is this game is scary. Are those the are those the Elden Rings? I don't think so. I think the I think the ring is supposed to be some kind of bigger conceptual thing. It's very simple. You died. This game is brutal. <laughs> Okay, we have a different weapon here. No longer the Sun Sword channeling. Flames? Excellent. Oh, that's cool. That was a great move. Almost Dumbledore from Harry Potter when he's whipping the flames around. He like, used the momentum to, to bring it in. <laughs> we have a sword made out of the Iron Throne. Maybe if he put it in the ground and sat on it, they would respect him. Yeah, they would just do what he says. <laughs> the sword looks like a holly branch. That's the closest thing in real life I could think of. Uh, in the, the Battle of 1873 in Southern Europe, the sword that famously won the castle of, was this one. The interesting thing is all the big giant swords that we've seen so far, are they're all one-handed. Like that's how you should have yeah, to carry it, right? Silly. You definitely would have to carry it like that. They're not using their other hand at all. Maybe they're saving it for the magic. Yeah, that seems to be how this game works is like you got your kind of magic-y hand and you got your Sordidy sword hand. I don't know. And we have the obligatory double sword. If there were such a thing, it would be like basically impossible to use. Like the staff spinning is cool. It looks cool when you're doing it. They got again great animations coming off of it. He's using his other hand to to help, which is good. Swords are difficult to use because when you swing a sword, you have to keep the edge of that sword precisely aligned so that you cut through your target instead of just slapping your target or like cutting partly through your target and then getting stuck. It's hard enough with one sword. If you had a double sword, you would then have to like precisely align two different edges from two different angles. Sorry, everyone who likes double swords. If double swords would work, they probably would have built one, but no one ever built one. Oh, the bear hug. Oh man, they, they made a game of the Revenant. I'm so happy they finally did that. This game is really scary. Like everything in this game is pretty dang scary. Yeah, it just feels you're unsettled. Cinematic, like, you know, crush you, smush you, eat you moves are just really scary too. Just, woof. I like this bloody sword thing. That's kind of cool. Ooh, oh, I like that. Actually, I think this is the, the least silly sword in terms of its sort of general makeup. Like, no, I'm sorry, that, that like flaming one was pretty cool too. That was pretty slender. It seemed like a real sword kind of. This one looks pretty cool too, again, even though it's like blurry because of all the bloody magic stuff. I like when the swords look like swords. This cloak is a good cloak. Mm -hmm. I like this cloak. We're actually not here to comment on any sort of gameplay mechanics or weaponry. It's only cloaks that we care about. This is called Expert's Cloak. Expert's React, Cloak Enthusiast Edition. <laughs> But the thing that I'm, I saw a few times in this is, you know, the kind of really deep stab, and then he kind of either really violently pulls out the sword or he kicks the opponent off of his sword violently. And like, that looks really cool. So, you know, that's the primary reason I would imagine they're doing it. And you get that really, that ripping sound they do. But something that most people don't know is if uh, you stab, particularly if it's a, you know, really deep stab with a long blade, that is not easy to, to pull out. You could legitimately, you know, run someone through and then you might, not be able to pull it out in time for their friend to, to off you. So the, the kind of the violently pulling out the weapon, that's actually realistic. Oh my goodness, this Sandman hair thing happening. I think this is the main boss, like the biggest boss of the entire game that's almost impossible to to kill. As much as I love cloaks, he should be wearing nothing but a diaper and a bowl on his head. Oh, there's, there's like, a, like a big kind of celebrity gamer type who deliberately just like solos with like nothing. He wears nothing but like a loincloth and this big like, it's a helmet, but it looks like a bowl. Like it's just this big bowl on his head. And you're just like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, he's he's winning, he won, he won. You see, I don't even know how to fight at this, at this point. Yeah, there's just this like cloud of like differently colored explosions. No idea what's happening. Again, super great aesthetics. Like this character is super cool looking. I got one that it would make you look like a complete boss as a sword. Having complete 360 degree awareness. So no matter what helmet or whatever dang thing I am or what direction I'm facing, you know, like, I don't know, a 30 or 50 plus like diameter or radius sphere around me. I was just aware of all of the things in it. I think my sword would control the weather because then you get some cool lightning, some really awesome wind attacks, uh, you know. It's gonna be raining, so it's gonna be look really cool in every battle you're in. 
We're back with the Iron Throne. We also got a shield now. We're not just letting that left arm dangle. Even though that sword's still super heavy, I bet. I mean, I guess I get it. Like, with this heavy sword, you gotta, like, really wind up and overextend. But man, this is... There's no defense if you fight this way. The sound and the kind of physics of how the reactions happen. It's a very visceral game, for sure. Even though the best player in the world of Elden Ring wears nothing but a loincloth and a bowl, never forget your cloak in battle. Thanks for joining us again. Follow Gameology on YouTube and on Facebook. Follow me, at actor Paul Suda, on Instagram. Follow me on Drew the Curtis on Instagram. 